नम शिवाय शिवाय नम ओम नम शिवाय शिवाय नम अ लिटिल ओवर अ ईयर अगो Um, I had a profound spiritual experience um, by myself, just in my room. I was, was introduced to Shiva. Well, let's go back before you continue on to Shiva. You just glossed over that in three seconds. Do you know who Shiva is? Well, I didn't at the time. <laughs> your, your eyes were open. Yes. It was a physical figure. Something physical yes. Physical form. But indescribable, really. I said, um, "Are you God?" And then the thing laughed at me. <laughs> I. Was so overwhelmed by um, by love, more love than I thought was possible. A couple of days later, Kriyavan, he's a friend of a friend who I just happened to see on Facebook, and he said something about Amma coming to town, and I didn't know who or what she was. And the first thing that popped up was a video of her saying that sometimes people don't know why they've come to see me, and I tell them it's because I've called you. And I thought, well, okay, <laughs> I guess I've been called. I did always feel some kind of religious pull in my life, and. When I got to high school, my high school rebellion was to become a Southern Baptist because yeah. I thought that <laughs> Catholicism wasn't nearly strict enough for me. <laughs> when I when I turned 20, I became an atheist. Jasmine Jones has an astonishing story to tell. The former Catholic, former Baptist, and former ten-year atheist is a recent follower of Amma Sri Karuna Mai, as a result of a life-changing event. And one more thing, Jasmine Jones is also an opera singer. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in Pasadena, California, in the spring of 2018. Axel Tavid from Box Magnificat. Oh, and I picked it because I was thinking of Mother Mary. A little over a year ago,、um, I had a profound spiritual experience、um, by myself, just in my room. I was, I was introduced to Shiva, and、um, mm-hmm. then you know things just started lining up into place.、Um, A couple of days later, Kriyavan. I don't know if you know him,、mm-hmm. the tall fellow.、Mm-hmm. He's a friend of a friend who I just happened to see on Facebook, and he said something about Amma coming to town, and I didn't know who or what she was, but I was curious enough to click the link. And I was at work at the time in my office,、um, and as soon as I followed the link, the computer froze. I, I couldn't leave the link. You know, I decided. You know, I, maybe I didn't. This wasn't for me. I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought I would click away, but the, everything was frozen. The only thing I could do was continue forward to purchase this event. <laughs> I thought this is strange. I better call the IT guy. And as I tried to reach for the phone, I became woozy and like I was, you know, dizzy and and I thought I was falling out of my chair when I was still seated.、Um, and so I thought, fine, <laughs> I'll just click forward to see what happens. And、uh, I ended up purchasing the event, and then, of course, all the computer issues cleared up. And、um, mm-hmm. I thought, you know, I better look into this woman who I've just purchased a hundred-dollar event to go see.、Uh, so I watched a quick YouTube video on my phone while no one else in the office was looking. And the first thing that popped up was a video of her saying that sometimes people don't know why they've come to see me, and I tell them it's because I've called you. And I thought, well, okay, <laughs> I guess I've been called. Well, let's go back before you continue on to Shiva. You just glossed over that in three seconds. Do you know who Shiva is? Well, I didn't at the time.、Um, I didn't know what had happened or who had appeared to me.、Um, but one day, I was just folding laundry, and my son was lying on the bed, and、um, I had the most profound feeling of overwhelming love, and I didn't know what was going on. So I thought I should just sit down. <laughs> And、um, kind of a a figure appeared.、Uh, you saw the figure with your eyes. It, I don't know if I could call it a figure, but it was a presence. Some、uh, something appeared with my I could see with my eyes, and f- something. You your eyes were open. Yes. It was a physical figure. Something physical yes. Physical form. But indescribable, really. Well, you try know. describing <laughs> it. Like a. 
<laughs> like a gold, like a golden light. Um, and I, I said, um, are you God? And then the thing laughed at me. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. And then I just, I was so overwhelmed by, um, by love, you know, I, more love than I thought was possible, more love than I thought could exist. And so I, I don't know how long I was sitting there with some laundry in my hands, but I thought, I, at this point, I better get up, I've got to go to the bathroom or something. And, but I, and it, ca it came with me, the feeling mm -hmm. and the presence. And then I, you know, I, sit, you know, I went to go do the dishes and it was there, it, you know, so the rest of the evening, I felt like um, I had a visitor inside my brain, <laughs> you know, a presence, some, something with me, um, just blasting me with love that mm. is indescribable. Mm. And I didn't know who or what it was, or, and that was December 16th, 2016. Mm. And, um, you know, only you know, months later, after coming to see Amma, um, did I, and I, Amma inspired me to do some reading. And um, it was then like, that I realized what was happening in my life. Then it was Shiva. <laughs> then it was Shiva. And then I was on this course with Amma. And, you know, and that I'd always been on it. It wasn't just that it happened starting December 16th, you know. But it, it was something that just became more clear. <laughs> okay, you, you said something key here. You were always, you've always been on this. So tell me about uh, the path you've always been on. Um, well... Were you raised in any particular religion? Yes. Um, I grew up Catholic. Um, my mother, when I was born, uh, my mother and I almost both almost died in childbirth. And um, my, mo my mother was, would tell me this story when I was a little girl that, you know, about how we, all, we both almost died and the doctor w was late coming, you know, like there was nobody to help her and um, she was praying fervently to Mother Mary that at least that I would survive. And then so I thought, Mother Mary saved us, and so I would pretend to be Mother Mary as a little girl and put like a little blue shawl over my head and play Mother Mary, and um, you know, I was, so I had a, I had an affinity for a, a young age um, with Mother Mary, and so I I did always feel some kind of religious pull in my life, and when I got to high school, my high school rebellion was to become a Southern Baptist because yeah. I thought that <laughs> Catholicism wasn't nearly strict enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, um, you know, I was baptized as an a evangelical Christian and led Bible studies and was on the worship team and went on missions and became very devout in that way. And then, when I... You found uh, something even more strict. Well, it's <laughs> funny enough, when I, when I turned 20, I became an atheist. I just, that I, doesn't <laughs> surprise me all of a sudden. <laughs> I just, it, it lost, it's, um, something happened, I, I don't know what, I saw a lighthearted Ricky Gervais comedy mm. about I think of the invention of lying, and I thought, you know, I think it's, 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 the, the idea is that um, how easy it would be to make up God. Yeah, and I thought that's right. It is very easy, and that's probably what happened. Mm -hmm. And and then I was free of it for ten years. I thought I just I was perfectly content to be an atheist and um, you know love science. I and, uh, nothing against, you know, my previous religious experiences. I just thought, this is how I, this is the evolution of Jasmine. It was into atheism. <laughs> and I bet you were just as loving as an atheist as you were <laughs> as a Baptist or as a Catholic. <laughs> I, I, it was a um, fine experience and, yeah, I, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was perfectly happy, perfectly content to be an atheist. Um, ten years later, what happened then? Ten years later, well, I, uh, after school, I got married and had a son, and um, my husband, who was an English teacher, um, he changed, and uh, shortly into our marriage, he became very abusive, and uh, at one point, I told him that I would like to be divorced, and then that night, he kidnapped our son. And they found him two weeks later. The police found him in Pennsylvania. Mm. You know, for, so for two weeks, I wasn't sure if my son was dead or alive. Mm. So it was very, a very tricky time. And that, I don't think that like, was the catalyst to change my mind about God, mm. but that was just like a turning point where mm -hmm. I was on my own with a child. 
and because uh, my husband, of course, went to jail. The irony is that somebody, an experience like that, for a lot of people, could turn them away from God. It, uh, it certainly could. Well, I was already turned. I was already That's away. Right. You know, and I, I didn't think. I didn't. There was no thoughts of like of you know of prayer or anything. But the, wh while they were gone, there was a couple moments where I thought maybe my son wasn't alive anymore. But most of the time, I just was like, I just felt it will all be okay. You know, and something. So there was a peacefulness about it that, um, that I, of course, now attribute to Amma <laughs> because, you know, everybody expected me to panic and to break down. Mm -hmm. you know, that didn't happen. Um, and so for one year, uh, this, that was two years ago that that happened, and then for one year I, I was on my own, really struggling, lots of stresses and pressures. Um, and cu coming up on the one-year anniversary of that event is when, is when Shiva and Amma appeared came into my life, you know, mm -hmm. so um, that, that was a very stressful year, and, um, and it took a lot to get through, uh, but then as soon as Alma and Shiva came, um, I quit my job in the corporate world and started my own business. I felt like inspired to be, change my diet completely, and in, within just a couple of months lost 80 pounds, which I don't <laughs> know how, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I don't feel like I have especially strong willpower <laughs> or discipline. <laughs> Somehow, it's all come together really nicely. Uh, as after this event a year ago, um, Bhavani, I, Bhavani posted on Facebook that there was a satsang at her house, mm -hmm. and it wasn't too far from mine, so I decided to go over and check it out. But you know, while I was here a year ago, I almost left halfway through. Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure what I was doing there, for one. Uh, and Everybody seemed to know each other, they knew all the chants, and they knew what the idols yeah, were. And I know and that feeling yeah, very well. And I just thought, I don't know Any anything, those. and it's all maybe a little bit too churchy for me, because at the time I was still feeling like I was an atheist. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, maybe I'll just go, and but I, I thought I'll give one sitting of meditation a chance. So we're sitting there, and Amma said something like, now I'm, like, we're going to meditate, and I'm going to um, burn away your karma or something. She said something like that mm -hmm. to the group. Oh. And I thought, that sounded like a bunch of hocus pocus to me, but I'll just stay for this one thing. And so we, we just closed our eyes and began to meditate, which I, I had started to meditate on my own a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, immediately I felt like a, a knife stabbing pain down into my heart and into my heart. So like two knife stabbing me. Something you've never felt. Felt before? <laughs> I thought I was having a heart attack, mm -hmm. but my logical brain thought, you're least likely to have a heart attack while you're meditating. <laughs> 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 so, uh, don't cry out. Uh, <laughs> that would look weird in front of all these people who know what they're doing. Um, so I just sat there with this feeling like I was being stabbed in the heart, mm. and uh, eventually I had to get up and take a break. I went outside and I thought, like, is this, re is this, is that, is she burning my karma away? Is that what that's happening? <laughs> you know, and um, <clears throat> so I went back and sat for the whole event, and uh, she did this, um, she was going to do a ceremony afterwards, which I left for, and I didn't go to the Homa, because um, I, I was kind of scared away by that. But as I was driving home, you know, I thought, I just felt this, like, profound lightness, and I don't, I, d I don't, like, I didn't know if I w that I was going to be following her as I am now at that time, but I just like I I knew something was was changed. You know, it was a very interesting um, mm. moment. And then from then I started um, reading and praying, and um, I met Bhavani just sh a couple of days later at her house for a satsang, and she said, "Oh, I, you know, I'm I'm." Uh, doing the rude drum with this fellow Paul, but I just I can't si I just can't hear the pitches. And I thought, you know, well, I'm a singer, Bhavani. I'd I'd love to. Maybe you could tell me more about what this stuff is, and we could trade, and I'll teach you how to sing. And mm -hmm. she said, Jasmine, you're the answer to my prayers. I just prayed to Allah that somebody would come and help me sing. And I was just like. <laughs> First of all, weird that you're praying to Amma, because I didn't, still didn't know what that meant. <laughs> you know, I just didn't know people would do that. I didn't re you know, realize the wholeness of, of who and what she is. I mean, I still don't. But, um, uh, so then she introduced me to the Rudram. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we began chanting the Rudram every morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and um, for now almost a year, um, we've been doing that. and. Um, and <laughs> it's been a really lovely experience. Many, 
many times um, uh, feel like um, I've been you know, in the presence of a divine figure because of the Rudram, which is such a powerful prayer. And um, I feel so blessed to be able to learn it so early in my spiritual practice. Well, you're a babe in the woods. One year in, <laughs> after having met Amma, are you still an atheist? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is this I the first time you've thought about that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm deeply in love with God, but I, you know, I never made like a <laughs> decision, mm -hmm. I guess, you know. Um, but you know, I, um, and, and actually through um, Amma and the kind of Vedic traditions and all these gurus and gods, um, I'd, I'd say I'm, I'm most um, interested and most drawn to Indian tradition, but it kind of rekindled my love for God in general, like as just this broader concept, you know. Um, I love Sikh tradition. I love um, Mother Mary. My, my, my Catholic roots kind of came back, you know. Sure. It's, so it's just like um, there isn't an aspect of God that I don't love, which is really exciting. Uh, <laughs> well, you're on quite a ride. I mean, your background is just fascinating. Your skill, your accomplishments, your gifts are outstanding. I uh, can't wait to hear you sing. Uh, and I'm wondering where this is going to lead to because you're so newly enrolled in this new course of life, it seems. Well, um, this year uh, I'd like to go to India for six months. Six months? <laughs> yes, well, uh, so I have a young son and I have this business, which is a pretty mobile business. I can do it mostly anywhere that there's an internet connection. So um, uh, we, and I have business ties here in Los Angeles, but I do have a partner here who, as well who can handle the, the business that needs to be done here. But um, we would really like to travel. Uh, my son is just like me. <laughs> he, um, Except he's four. <laughs> yes, uh, so he's just like me, but he's, He's further along. <laughs> <laughs> does he like Indian food? Uh, that's the challenge. Um, <laughs> he does love meditation, though. He loves Amma. He, I know, can you believe it? Um, just the, on the Thursday when we were getting ready to welcome Amma with the coconuts and whatnot, mm -hmm. Bhavani, I told Bhavani, oh, Benjamin's been meditating, and she was like, let me see. And then so he sat down and, you know, for five minutes, you know, for a four-year-old, that's not bad. And... Um, it was. I was so proud. <laughs> sure. And I always pray when he's meditating that Alma just hold him there for just one more minute, you know. And it, he, he, he. Uh, we were going to the Lakshmi Temple up in North Hollywood once, um, with Bhavani and Prabhu. I don't know if you know him from San Francisco, and. Um, Prabhu is the uh, chauffeur for Amma who drives her to uh, Ojai, I believe. Oh, is, does he do? I am not surprised. <laughs> I <laughs> interviewed him in this chair last night. Oh, okay. Yes, he, he's a charming fellow. Well, we were going up to the Lakshmi um, Temple uh, in North Hollywood, and um, Benny was coming with us. And he go and I just told him we're going to go to a temple. I don't, I don't, I don't. I just you know bring him along with me everywhere because you know I'm a single mother. But um, he said, "Are we going to the Temple of Light?" And I thought, <laughs> "Your son asked you this." Yes. And I said, maybe, yes. I don't <laughs> and he said, um, oh, will we get the power of hope and the power of love? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where he got it from, but it was so sweet and charming. And Bhavani turned around from the front seat and was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, that's what we're going there for, the power of hope and love. You know, I just... <laughs> um, so he's, he is very much like me in, in that he's... Um, deeply spiritual from a young age and um, and he's just a very special little guy. So, so you've got some reconciliation to do whether or not you stay with Amma exclusively or if you're drawn to another teacher or if you want to go back to Mary sounds like you're already in her <laughs> camp to begin with <laughs> and revisit some Catholic or Southern Baptist <laughs> Uh, so, you know, you're a story to watch develop over the years, so we, we will keep our eye on you. Thank you. Well, um, I have a, my, I've, I'm going to place my bets on Amma. <laughs> <laughs> <Me too. laughs> have you talked to her much? 
I, I just spoke to her for the first time today. Well, every time I'm in her presence, Bavani always kind of, you know, pushes me into her face and says, this is Jasmine, she's doing the bedroom, you know. Or, and, um, but today, uh, after her discourse, I was sitting in the front, you know, just beaming at her. And I just said, may I approach you? And she said, yes. I said, may I come to India, please? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I have a young son. He's only four. And she said, can he sit with you in your lap while you meditate? And I said, he meditates too, Amma. So she said, hey, you can come. Uh. So, so we're going. I mean, I always knew we were going to India this year, but um, to have to th- that he can come with me to, in- to, to Amma, you know, um, I know. I'm so well, you're rather fearless. You've got a lot of courage. How was it that you became so attracted to the Rudram that you actually followed through and did this? Well, um, from my opera singing background, um, I'm good at picking up languages and learning mm. long pieces of music, mm. you know, for two or three hour operas. Mm. So um, that kind of comes naturally to me, but um, being so in love with Shiva <laughs> and to, f- you know, uh, I didn't even know it, I didn't know it was a prayer to or about Shiva, but um, you know the moment I heard it, I was in. And also, who I'm li- the the master that is teaching us. His name is Paul. Um, I won't tell you more because he really values his privacy. But he's his his instrument is so um, otherworldly. You know that to hear him chant the Rudram, uh, it, I was immediately hooked. And it sounds like a full chorus from one man, you know, it's just something that's uh, very, <laughs> yes, very you, beautiful. Yeah, you might think about going to Atlanta this year if you want to participate in the Rude Room. Yeah. It's, it's 10 days of Rude Room. That's what somebody was telling me, so, um, yeah, I would, I, you know, I'm hooked. Yeah. So. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say? You know, I, d- <laughs> I don't have anything in particular in mind, but Jody? this is a really great experience. Any questions? I'm so happy to hear this story. <laughs> well, I'm already very fond of you guys from like Guru Purnima. I think you, you stood up and you were nervous and ta- about talking about how you organized an event, yeah. and I was just yeah. I was just beaming with love for you, and I didn't know you, you know, but you were you were I think you know a little shy or something, and I was just like <laughs> <laughs> so. A yeah, I I thought that was such a remarkable thing, and. And you are a very loving couple, so it's you know been nice to see you guys th- over the <laughs> different events, you know. We would like to stay tuned, because this is just a, a great story early in your life, early in your son's life, and I think it's just due to take you everywhere you'd like to go, spiritually, I mean, and, um, and you have a guru now. A, the Divine Mother, who has told us she is Mary. Mm-hmm. So your little girl costume, now you're with her. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's unbelievable. Full <laughs> circle. Thank, thank you very, very, very much. It's and as you'll learn to say to a lot of people, Jay Krunamai. Jay Krunamai. Set exult of each spiritus meus. Et exult of it spiritus meus, et exult of it spiritus meus. In Deo salutari, salutari meo. In Deo